Hey, welcome back to uh, part two of the review of basic probability. I hope you had a go at part one and uh, got your head around that. Hey, what do we got here? Compound events. Hmm, I wonder what that is. A compound consists of more than one thing, doesn't it? It's used in several uh, areas in uh, science and uh, uh, medicine. Compound fracture, uh, a compound made of uh, more than one element there in chemistry. And what's it mean here in this context? What it means is we're going to do an experiment that uh, has more than one thing happening. When we do uh, the experiment, we get uh, not just one uh, possible outcome, but two or more. So uh, let's have a look at the examples I've got here. And the screen clippings here are from Hayes and Harris publications. So you might have a look at their textbook there. Let's have a look at this up here. What are we going to do here? We've got two containers and uh, they've got marbles or balls in them. And what we're going to do is try to work out what's the probability of getting a blue from container X and a red from Y. So here, the event consists of two draws. So there's going to be two outcomes there, and we want the probability of getting those two together. So it's a compound event. Okay, two things needed or more. And what about down here? You go along uh, to a library or something, they've got a couple of photocopiers. What's the probability that copier A is working and copier B is not? Okay, got the idea there? We're looking at an event which comprises of more than one activity or more than one outcome, therefore. And we want to know when we put these together, when we compound them, what are our chances? You might have seen some of this before, but uh, let's hear what Huddy has to say about compound events. Come down here a bit. And one way we might analyse that problem with uh, the marbles or the balls in the containers might be to use a grid or a tree even to see what all the outcomes are. This is one way of doing it. Along here we might have box X and what can we get? We could get uh, one of these two blues or one of the greens and then box Y listing out all the possibilities. So uh, we've seen here they have shaded in uh, NE, isn't it? The number of uh, outcomes that comprise the event E, which is a blue from this box matched with a red from that one. So it could be blue with that red, blue with that red, or blue with that red. There's three choices in box Y. So this is a very concrete way of seeing how to work out the probability. So NE here is what? Well, we've got six of them. NS is all of the possibles, uh, possible points in the sample space, which is four by four, which is 16. So the probability of getting a blue from X and a red from Y is actually 6 over 16. What do you think about that? And we could say that's uh, 3 over 8, if you wish. What do you think about that? Are you critical? I hope you are. What's the question? You say, hey, honey, surely you don't have to draw diagrams for mass cal calculations in probability. Isn't there a more mathematical way of doing it? Well, let's come down, and maybe you've seen this before, the idea of... Uh, the and or rule. Now, in this particular course, there's only a very basic probability course. I'm not going to prove this rule. You've seen this before. Or indicates that we add probabilities and and indicates that we multiply them. Oh, well, let's have a look at how it works uh, up above here. Let's go back up and just have a look here. What could we say? Well, the probability of a B, oh, I should be putting R in there, shouldn't I? Uh, B from X is what? It's 2 out of 4, and the probability of a red from Y is 3 out of 4. So putting the two together, a B from X and an R from Y, probability of B from X and, crucial word there, R from Y, you can see quite clearly that it diminishes. You want an extra 
thing happening in your event. So 2 over 4 is going to be reduced. We're going to find 3 quarters of it. So overall, you're going to reduce your chances, 6 over 16. That's one way of remembering the AND rule. It's not a proof, but it's saying if you want two things to occur, you're going to reduce your probability. So uh, it's 2 out of 4, which is a fraction, times another fraction is going to give you a smaller answer. So hence you get the AND rule means multiply the probabilities. The OR rule means add them. If you'll settle for something or something else, you've got more chances. And so you'll increase your probability. And with fractions, of course, that means you're going to add them. That's a very simplified way of looking at the AND OR situation. But what it means is it's extremely important to define, this is a Huddyism now, define the event, and I have a big thing about this, define the event analytically. Analytically. Okay. Analytically means working in this idea of and or or. Really try to break down everything that's happening there, as I just did. Probably a blue and a red is blue from box X and a red from box Y. That sort of thing. Define the event analytically, very carefully, breaking it down into all its pieces. The biggest problem is when people say the event is uh, two reds. You need to say that's a red from here and a red from wherever. Okay, we're going to do some of that in a minute. Okay, let's have a look at an example here. A coin and a die, a die is a singular of dice, are tossed simultaneously. Determine the probability of getting a head and a three without using a grid. So this is your ana analytical approach to the event. So the event is probability of a head, keyword, and a three. So we're going to break it up. It's a probability of a head times the probability of a three. Can you see the idea of breaking it up into pieces? Speaking like that might give you an idea of how specific you have to be about the definition of your event. Okay, are you ready? Come down here and have a go at these uh, problems here. Just pause the presentation question four there. Here's a photocopy of back again. Um, that's where I pinched it from, mate. All right, so 5D5 question one. Here you are, what's the probability that it uh, rains on any one day on two successive days? Okay, so you need to break that down. This and this, or this or this, three successive days. So these statements are not analytical, are they? You've got to break them down and analyse them in terms of the and or rule. Okay, this is starting to break it down. Okay, so I want you to try and work very hard on 5D5. You might actually have to ask your teacher or other students when you see the answers because some of these really do need an analysis. All right, have a go at those four and as usual, I'll go uh, down to, I think it's question seven here, and then I'll show you the answers. Just the answers, not the full solutions. So you might need some help to find out how to get those answers. Okay, pause that. I'm going to show you the answers now. Okay, come down here. Okay, so that's the rest of that set. Look out here, they both hit the target. That needs analysing. Who are they? This one and this one. Keyword and. Analytical. Be analytical about your definition of the event because in English in communication we often say things like both or all of them now that needs breaking down all right I'll show you the answers now okay here are the answers so he had uh, see how he went with that you really need to discuss that maths is uh, can be learned very well and understood very well if you use a dialogue approach that is talk to people about it. talk to various teachers uh, look at how maths on uh, the internet or other sources on the internet. So you get it, people explain it in different ways. You get a good understanding that way. All right, let's move on and have a look at what I've got for you down here. Independent and dependent events. I think the words say, say it all, the words say it all, independent or dependent. 
Independent means they're not connected. Dependent means one is affecting or dependent upon the other. Well, let's have a look at what that might mean. I'm going to give you two scenarios here. So scenario one is I'm going to draw two balls from this container, from this box. And uh, I want something like, I want the probability of a blue and a red. Okay, so again, this is a compound event. Okay, there are two things happening. Uh, two uh, different balls are being drawn. I'm going to over here uh, draw a ball from X like we did before and a ball from Y. So they're both compound events because a couple of things happening. And again, I want the probability of a blue from X and a red from Y. Okay, now here's my question for you. Just from your basic knowledge of the word independent and dependent, which scenario involves independent events and which scenario involves dependent events? Okay, have a chat, pause it, and now what's the answer? What do you think? Well, this one over here has the potential to be dependent, potential. Better come back and look at that. But these would always be independent because you're taking the balls from different boxes there. What happens over here is not connected to here. Okay, why is this over here potentially dependent? Okay, could it be independent? Okay, let's think about that. Could the probability of getting that red be independent of the blue? You might have seen this before. And the answer is, it's dependent if you don't replace the first ball or marble. Don't replace the first. Okay, and then if you put it back, the scenario is just the same as it was before. But if you um, don't replace it, the uh, situation is on the second draw, you've got a different number out of, for the total there. Let's go and have a look at that. So dependent means, oh, I've got that wrong, haven't I? Yes, no, that's all right. Dependent means don't replace it because the second uh, uh, number is affected. Independent means put it back. Okay, let's go down and have a look at that. I'm getting confusing there. Okay. Dependent events. All right. So let's go through that again now. Dependent events is when the second, if you like, event depends on the outcome of the first. Okay. Okay. So it depends on the outcome of the first. So what that means is don't replace the first marble or ball because then the numbers for the second um, event will be affected. Okay? And you will, it will depend on it. If you replace them, everything stays as it is there. All right, let's have a look at doing some calculation there for that one. Hang on, I'll just come up here. If A and P are dependent events, then probability of A, then B, I'll put AND there again. Probability of A, and you have to adjust B given that A has occurred. You have to adjust it. Okay, well what does that look like up here? Let's have a look. So what's the probability of a blue and a red? Okay. If you don't replace the ball, they're, they're dependent. So you've got three blue out of what we've we got, eight. That's probability of a blue and means times. Probability of a red will be five out of, but you didn't replace it, seven. So that's the answer there. That's the idea. And there are symbols in maths for that. This is the probability of a blue times the probability of a red given that a blue occurs. 
That's our way of showing that it's conditional on what comes out first. So this is called conditional probability beyond this little course. Conditional probability. Okay, because you're adjusting the probability of the uh, second event, knowing that the first has occurred. Okay, so this is dependent events. And you have to adjust the second probability in the knowledge, in the light of what happened first. Okay, come down here and let's have a look at example 11 here. Box contains four red, underlined or something, and two yellow tickets. Two tickets are randomly selected, one by one from the box, without replacement. Find the probability that both are red. Both are red. Here it is. Look at the analytical approach to this event. First red and second red. There it is. Okay, so let's multiply the probabilities. So it's four on six, and there's only three reds remaining now. So that's been adjusted, and that's been adjusted, because these events are dependent. What happens in the first situation affects the second. Okay, and then we have an answer. Okay, so let's do the second one. First is red and the second is yellow. First red and times the second is yellow, given that. Or we could put the probability of yellow given red. Conditional probability notation. So it's 4 out of 6 times 2 out of 5. So there's still 2 yellow, but it's out of a reduced number now. Okay, do you get the idea? You just have to analyse it carefully, be analytical. Now, sometimes they say you draw them simultaneously. Well, here's the person's rule. Can we understand this, though? Drawing two tickets simultaneously is the same as selecting one ticket after another with no replacement. Why would that be so? Let's try to analyse that. When you put your hand in to get the first ticket, okay, you know you're drawing two, you would be putting your other hand in to get the second ticket at the same time. So you're going to choose different tickets because you know you want two. You're not going to put both hands on the one ticket. So as you go to that one, it means this one has one less chance, doesn't it? So it's like you can't do the two at once. Uh, you can't, two hands can't choose the one ticket. Therefore, this will be dependent because this one's gone. Your hand or your mind has said that's going there. I'm going to choose one from over here. So uh, as a separate one. And so obviously that is the same as without, without replacement because you haven't got the opportunity of getting this one. The other hand got it first, if you like. All right. Or was determining to get it. Determined to get it. All right. So there you are. Simultaneously means it's no replacement. It's dependent. Okay. Let's go down and have a look at some examples here. All right. So you've got to do the same thing. Watch out. Be analytical here. Both are red. That's a red and a red. And does the second probability have to be adjusted? Is it dependent upon the first one? And you might like to uh, start using this notation, a bit more sophisticated. Red given that a red has occurred. All right, pause the presentation, have a go, and I'm going to show you the answers now. Okay, so here's some answers for uh, those couple of questions. Check it, make sure you've analysed the event and have written it out in clear terms. Let's go down to this example now. Have a look. Okay. A hat contains tickets with numbers 1 through 20 printed on them. Three tickets are drawn from a hat without replacement. So you can't get all prizes. Term probability that all are prime numbers. Okay. So how many primes are there from 1 to 20? So you need to list them out. So this is NE, if you like. So the probability of three primes is this. Here's your analytical approach. First and second and third. Okay, so it's eight out of 20. Seven out of 19. Uh-huh. Okay. 19 now and seven. They've both been reduced because the first one was prime and it reduced the total and reduced the number of primes. And then six out of 18. All right, so each one of these is dependent.
because it's not being replaced. Mm, all right. So you get an idea of being able to calculate winners in a, a lottery or something, where once your ticket is drawn, you're not going to be back in there for the next prize and so on. Well, come down. Let's see if you can do some. There's a couple more now. All right. They are all strawberry creams. You need to be analytical and, uh, you know, analytical. Break it down. How many are there? Three. So it's this and this and this. Okay, pause presentation. Have a go. Here are the solutions now. No, not the solutions, just the answers. Solutions are where you see how I actually work the problem out. All right. Let's go down and do another final bit now. This is getting a bit more interesting, a bit more complicated. You're doing probably some tree diagrams. So we're going to use a tree again. And then we're, later on we're going to say, well, we don't want to do diagrams. Can we analyse it? That's important. Okay. So we've got a box of three red, two blue, and one yellow marble. And we're going to take two marbles. So we've got uh, events here, which are compound, and consisting of more than one result on each trial of the experiment, using some of that language from before. So if we replace it and not replace it. Let's have a look at the situation, with and without replacement. Okay. So with replacement... You're going off, and here's the first law, remember, with a tree, you start with a dot, you go out to the first part, or the first thing that is happening within the event, first activity, and then the second one. So it's the first marble, and then the second marble. So the first marble could be red, blue, or yellow. The second could be red, blue, or yellow red, blue, or yellow there. So we're going to do all possibilities there. So a tree now, with a, for a probability calculation, you can put, what's the probability of getting red on the first draw? It's three out of six. And if you put the marble back, on the second draw, it's still three out of six. Okay, and then if we come up here, a red and a blue, two out of six, one out of six. So they don't actually change going through the experiment or the trial of the experiment, they don't change. Come over here though, without replacement, you get a red at three out of six on the first draw to get to there, and then there's uh, only two left out of five. See how this whole row here has to be adjusted because it is dependent. Why are they dependent? because you didn't put the marble or the ball back in the box. Okay, so uh, that's the idea. And notice down here there's a big difference too. You uh, can't have two yellows, because there's only one yellow, and if you get a yellow, there's none left in the box. Okay, and no more yellows left. So it's actually naught out of five there. Okay, so that's going to help you actually work out probabilities because let's take what's the probability of a blue and a red in that order so it would be the probability of first blue and second red so that's the probability of a blue times the probability of a red given a blue has occurred. Probably the blue is two six, probably the red is three fifths, so it's this times this. So we're using the tree to try and help us uh, work out the probabilities. So six out of 30 there. Okay, that idea. So the tree can help us analyze the event because it is a compound situation, these two times together. Okay, so again, what we try to do ultimately, and it goes a bit beyond this course here, we're just going to work with trees, is to analyse this and work these numbers out without a tree. I'll show you that a bit later on down here. Let's come down and have a look. 
Okay, now uh, I don't think we need to look at this. Blue and red with a second draw, I think we've, un we've understood that okay. All right, let's have a look. So here we are. Two reds with replacement. The probabilities don't change. Nine out of 36 or a quarter. Without replacement, see how this one's adjusted. This is the probability of a red given that a red has occurred. So there's probably the first red. Now there's one less red to choose from out of one less in the total, so it's two-fifths. Got it? Okay. Let's see. Let's see if you can do some problems. Here's an example. Three red, two blue, one yellow. Find the probability of getting two different colours if replacement occurs. Ah, uh, now here we are, no tree. We're going to do it with a careful analysis. Analysis. Okay. Analysis. Yep, got it. Okay, two different colours. Okay, we want two different colours. Gee, that needs analysing. Because that could be a red and a blue, or a red and a yellow, or a blue and a red, or a blue and a yellow, or a yellow and a red, a yellow and a blue. Okay, so it's got the tick ones. So if you go back up to our diagram, uh, they're talking about the, these ticks here. Don't Let's get rid of my ticks. Okay, so talking about those, you pick them out from the tree diagram. Now, ultimately, could you work these out with a system for yourself without a tree? I think you could. There is a system, isn't there? Red with another colour. There they are. Then blue with another colour. All right, see the idea? But your analysis is more difficult without a tree. Can you do it without counting them up from the list of outcomes in a tree? Ultimately, that would be good if you could. So here we want a red and a blue, a red and a blue. This is replacement, so they stay the same probability for the first and second uh, event occurring there. Three, six, and one, six, and so on. Two different colours down here. See the difference? Here they are, just on those second values. And they are all different because you didn't put the marble back. Okay, and so the second event is dependent upon the first. All right, so uh, got the idea? I don't know. Do you want to try and do it with a tree and then without a tree? See how good you are? Come down, let's look at some problems. Okay, here's four little questions for you. Now, use a tree diagram or not. How good are you or not? Can you do it? A jar, a jar is randomly selected and one marble is taken from it. Determine the probability that marble is red. Well, you could do a tree. You've got jar and then marble colour, haven't you? Okay, so try a tree, because a tree can be quite difficult here. Or you could say, I'm going to choose jar A and a red, or jar B and a red. Okay, this, this set here is getting a little bit more difficult, particularly if you try to do it without a tree. By an analytical approach, analyze the event. So the tree certainly helps you see all the possibilities. If you're good enough to do a tree, trees can be difficult too. You start with a point, you go out to the first thing that comprises your event, and then to the second thing. Okay, pause the presentation, have a go. I'm going to show you the answers in a minute. We'll just come down here. Okay, well, there are some answers for you for those uh, first four. Well, the others as well, but we haven't done those yet. Okay. Let's go down and finish off. Here's our last little example. The bag contains five red and three blue marbles. Two marbles are drawn simultaneously. So that's effectively no replacement. So what that means is the second one's going to be dependent on the first. So you want at least one red. Uh-oh, we're not using a tree here. All right, so we have to use an analysis of analytical approach. You could have a red and a red, 
or a red and a blue, or a blue and a red. Notice I've left out the and in here. But you know by now, a red, another red, there'll be one less available and one less to choose from out, out of the total. Okay, so then five eights and reduce both of them. So these with arrows are reduced values because they are dependent events. Okay, so they're all over 56, so we can add them up like that, and away we go. All right, so determine that at least one is red, at least one. That ana analysis is very, very important here. We've got to go through and say at least one is red and red, red and blue, or blue and red. Okay, either way around, first and second draw. Okay, let's have a look at um, the alternative down here, because the word at least, I think you've probably seen this before, at least means you're going to have several possibilities. Maybe it's simpler simply to take away the probability of the complement. In other words, at least one red. What is the uh, complementary event to that? It's no reds. So you would simply take that away from one. No reds is uh, well, two blues, okay, here. So it's one minus the probability of two blues. So two blues is a blue on the first and then a blue on the second, which is six on, fi uh, six on 56, which is one minus that there. Okay, so you could do it that way. So I think we might just mention here, the word at least often implies that we will have lots of possibilities and we might choose to put one mine as a probability of no, none of them, right? So at least quite often indicates complementary event approach might be easier than delineating all the possibilities implied by at least. Here there are only three, so it's not a big deal. But in more complicated problems, there might be a lot to list, and rather than list them all, just take a away from one, there probably are none of them. Do you get it? Come and try it with these couple of problems here. Okay, five, six, and seven. Then we're finishing there. Okay, so here this at least two are red. The, the at least ones, I want you to have a look at those, at least one prize down here. Just remember, be analytical. But the idea is you could be analytical using a tree or not a tree, okay? You could uh, try to uh, just analyze exactly what is meant. Or list all the possibilities from a tree and put in your probabilities on each branch of the tree. So you might try to do it um, both ways, maybe. All right. Have a go at these three. I'll show you the answers in a minute. Here we go. And there we have the uh, final set of answers there. All right, how'd you go? It's getting a bit harder, isn't it? You might need to go back and spend some time thinking about this. Um, but for the moment, that's our review of basic probability. And uh, uh, keep thinking about it. Cheers for now.